So we've got two questions. It's a two-part question from John Nania. Uh, and John asks, what's the best concert you've ever seen musically in terms of the musical performance? And then mm. as a follow-up to that, what's the best concert you've seen that's the best visually in terms of just the overall presentation? Two different. Could be the same show. Could be two different shows. Musically and visually. Oh, yeah. I've seen a lot of concerts. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've never been to a show. so I, I'm... <laughs> Does the symphony count? Yeah. <laughs> the opera? The opera? Yeah. Uh, Sonically, probably the best sound I've ever heard at a live show was Junior Brown and the Mavericks at the Jones Hall downtown Houston. Uh. Just because of the venue, it was in to this day, I can't get over how, um, how crystal clear the sound was. And visually, it was stunning too because it's, a, it's such a well lit, it's such a, uh, um, just acoustically, that room is insane. Mm -hmm. uh, how so? So that was I remember. I remember that in particular because the the Mavericks drummer, Paul Deacon, Paul Deacon, his arc. He pulls his. He pulls his. University of Miami graduate. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, he his arm would to hit that snare. He'd seem to extend it all the way behind his head before he just laid waste to that stick and that skin every note. It was in, in, insane to watch, but nobody else was drowned out. I mean, they had him on a large riser, large drum riser, and of course, Raul Melo and his voice and, the, mm -hmm. and that room. It was just, and, and then of course, rewind to the beginning of the show, Junior Brown came out and did this just, you know, 90 minute set and he really could have lip synced. It was just perfect. It was, but it was, it was too, it was too spontaneous. There was a lot of stuff that he threw in it. So that sonically, that was one of the best. Um, and then visually, probably one of, one of the best I saw uh, was, um, uh, well, I saw Tom Petty in the Woodlands. They did that, that, that massive big tree that this big, uh, uh, just huge backdrop. And uh, that was that was pretty that was pretty cool. I felt I felt sorry for anybody on drugs or on <laughs> mushrooms or on uh, <laughs> anything for that because a if you missed any of it or b if you had to you know if you're if you went off in some other dimension watching that you're you're you were in serious trouble. So that, that was a that was, and and, all, and Seventh Son the Iron Maiden stage show for Seventh Son was was pretty intense and uh, saw that in uh, just outside of Boston. Um, and uh, that that was the the my favorite part of that show was uh, Ace Freely was opening for them, and we had a blowout, so we missed the whole thing. <laughs> that was my favorite time to see oh. any kind of <laughs> any kind of sound. We missed we missed all of it. A uh, friend of mine up in uh, Boston, Billy Stamatis, his uh, Monte Carlo blew a tire on the way, and uh, but we still got to the show. We didn't miss any Iron Maid, but we, we certainly missed Ace Freely. I was delighted, <laughs> delighted, because they, they were all dying to see him. So, what, uh, what, what year was that? That was uh, 89, maybe? Apparently now he, he's touring again. Well, I'm not now, but he's, he's been touring again, and actually he's been doing okay. Like, to see Ace Freely in 89 would be kind of rough. Oh, I, I, yeah, I've, I've yeah. no, I've no, yeah. And, and, and but I've seen I've seen a video of him lately, and he's actually not terrible. Okay, I mean, but I mean, obviously, it's that kind of music. Yeah. But uh, uh, an acquaintance, Matt Starr, plays drums for him, and and so he's been posting a bunch of stuff of them playing when they were playing, and it's not it's not. I think he's finally got his act kind of cleaned up and stuff like that. But when he was on drugs, I can imagine how terrible that show must yeah. have been. Well, I I, I didn't like any of his stuff anyway. Yeah, fair enough. And yeah. I didn't like yeah, especially don't like any Kiss stuff. So. Chad, <laughs> um, I had to think about this for a while. Me too, but um, because there's so many things to choose from. Um, I think I think the the show that, that that first came to mind when I was thinking of like best musically, and it was just thrilling for me too. Was when I saw David Byrne play. It was like the first time I saw him play. I knew he was gonna say that. Yeah, I knew. <laughs> it, at uh, in New York at the Supper Club, 
and it was back in the mid nineties when he was touring on, he just put out a self titled titled record, which is really great. Um, it's, it's a, it's an under, well, most of his solo stuff is underrated really compared to the talking head stuff, but it's, I, I, I refer to it as his guitar album because he's, he's really underrated guitar player. He's actually really good, really distinctive style. And he plays a lot of lead lead guitar on that hmm. record. And he has a really great drummer whose name I forget. And a guy playing marimbas. That's just kind of interesting. Nice. Uh, and a really good bass player. You gotta do the visual. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Just, you know, marimba visual. It's like this. <laughs> it's like this. And that was number, not only that sound great, but it was a general admission show. And it, supper club was kind of like house of blues in Houston where you, you, you can just do the general missionary in the front. You can walk up to the stage if you get there on time. And, and then there's a balcony on, you know, on the, around the second level. Um, kind of like a, kind of like a, uh, what tower theater was here before yes. they turned it to a restaurant. Very much like that actually. But anyway, so we were right up at the front of the stage and, and it was just a thrill to see my hero, you know, that close and in really great, great form. Um, so that was really good. I think visually, um, oh God, probably, probably would be David Bowie's uh, Sound of Vision tour, I think was the presentation on that show was, was pretty amazing. And it's just the only, the only reason why I hesitate is because I was so, both times I saw that, that tour, because I saw it in Houston at Woodlands and I saw it up in Dallas. Uh, th- that was an outdoor, all, all those tours, at least the two I saw were in outdoor uh, arenas. Um, and we had to sit all the way back on the lawn, mm-hmm. you know, so we're really far away. And in Dallas, it was raining too, which didn't, didn't add to the enjoyment at all. <laughs> but that show was, was, uh, it was a really, one of the things I liked about that show too was, was it was very, um, the, the band was really simplistic. You know, they just had, it was Adrian Ballou and his band basically were his band on that show. Uh, so it was basically like, I think a four piece band, you know, nothing, nothing too fancy. And then, but then the, and then these, these incredible visuals where they had, uh, every song was accompanied by this massive projection that was right above them. Um, so it was this really interesting, the way it was all laid out and designed was incredible. Hmm. Um, and it's, that's one you don't see. I haven't really seen any good footage of that on, on YouTube or anything. I, I don't really know if, if they filmed it. it. I don't know if it ever, ever actually was released officially. I don't know. So that was a good one. But yeah, that's, that's a really, really tough call because I've, there's so many shows I've seen. I mean, like, like for the Mark Knopfler, I was thinking that one, one that yeah. could classify in both, both, uh, you know, both visually and musically. It was, just, yeah, it was, it was, just, it was, yeah. There were some sound issues there from where I think, but I think it was mostly where we were sitting. Yeah. His vocals were kind of buried, but visually it was just gorgeous. And, yeah. You know, anyway. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's so many. I mean, it's just, where, where, where was that Mark Knopfler show? Sh- um, Stafford. Stafford Center? Yeah. Um, really? Yeah. Wow. That place All is right, tiny. Revention, right, Revention Music Shit. Center, I think it's called. Revention? No, that's downtown. Well, what was that place called? It had some that's weird name. Stafford Music Hall. There's Stafford. Uh, 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 Revention used to be called like Verizon or something like that. Yeah. Oh, that's Verizon. Yeah, the Bayou. Yeah, there was something the else. Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyway. Down by the Hard Rock. Yeah. So yeah what's your, what, what's, what's, your, what's that? What's your? God, it's like Chad and you and and Patrick. It's like there's too many too many really standout ones that are just amazing. You know, I think. My first real big like rock show was Dio on the Last in Line tour. And when you're, you know, when you're 14 years old and you see this giant pyramid on stage and you're like, where's the band going to be? And all of a sudden the pyramid lifts off, top of it lifts off and there's the drum set. And there's two sphinxes that are turning their heads with laser eyes and smoke coming out of their <laughs> faces. Nice. Visually, it's kind of stunning, you know, to see a metal show. Because back in the 80s, metal shows were like that. You know, well, the Iron Maiden is still like that. Though. Yeah. I mean, they still bring out the plane and giant walking Eddie and Eddie behind the thing. But, you know, being a kid and seeing that visually was just like, holy shit, you know, it was pretty, pretty wild. And then, of course, and the subsequent tours were, the next one was the dragon, the giant dragon on the stage. And then uh, the the last one I saw, the Dream Evil tour was, I don't even know what it, what it was, but it was like, it was the, basically the Dream Evil tour was the, like, the basically, okay, after this, no more, no more stage. No more stage shows because it was at the end of the eighties by then and, and and that kind of thing was kind of dying out. But like orally, like 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 sonically, one of the better gee, I don't even know. Can't even think of one that was like a really great I, I when I saw the Rollins band, they sounded awesome, but uh they were loud. I mean they were really loud. 
to the end of the night, like my ears were just like, what, you know, but they sounded, they sounded so good. And it was just a three piece band with Henry doing whatever Henry does screaming, I guess, yeah. you know, but the bass player was this gigantic African American guy and the, and the regular guitar player and the regular drummer from, you know, the Rollins band from years ago. And they were just funky, cool, like really, really cool sounding. And the, the way the bass player played those, this that's kind of a hard rock band. I mean, they're yeah. they're kind of not heavy metal, but they're kind of punk and they're kind of like thrashy and aggressive. But the bass player, the way he played that stuff was just like it wasn't like. I mean, there were guys in the front that were going, ah, you know, doing the crazy. But I was just like, dang, this is funky, you know, kind of stuff. So, Rollins band sounded good. Um, <clears throat> though, actually, the last time we saw, uh, the last time we saw Todd, he had this crazy like um, LED like screen behind him so and the, and the thing was they were supposed to put the screen in front of them and they would play behind it for the first half of the show and then they would lift the screen and do the second half of the show but it was behind them and visually that was cool too i mean it sounded great but visually it was it was cool too there's just too many i mean there's too many yeah. too many concerts set. And, and we've all been to hundreds and hundreds of shows that yeah just thanks like, john yeah uh, that's a tough one yeah, and the, you might be interested to talk about the loudest show, too. <laughs> so I've got some Ario Speedwagon for me. Oh, really? Ario really? Speedwagon, 1986 or 87 in Port Portland, Maine, oh, uh, Cumberland County right. Civic Center. Fucking louder than the Rollins Band. Wow. And I think it was because my girlfriend, my high school girlfriend, Katie, wanted to go. So we went, you know, and they got that one song I like, and, and uh, it wasn't the one that was out at that yeah, time. Yeah, no, yeah, it was yeah. one, one of the first release. I think we may have talked about that. But they came out. I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. And God damn it. I think it was because the place was like maybe three quarters full. It wasn't completely sold out. So that sound just, and it's a hockey arena. So the sound just bounced yeah. around that concrete wall. Oh my God. Just, mm. oh. Yeah, I still I saw, hear it today. I saw Pantera here in town. Ooh. And that was pretty loud. And I've seen Motorhead a handful of times. And that was pretty loud. But I think the loudest I saw was when uh, it was uh, Megadeth, uh, who I, I, I'm not a fan. Um, some some good guitar pieces in that thing, but that, that voice. Uh, it's a little rough. Yeah. I like him, but I, that voice, Dave's voice can be kind of like, ooh, here we yeah. go. Yeah. I, I, you know, I enjoy some of the rhythms and some of the, some of the guitar work. Not a fan, but the, then uh, and then Motorhead and then Slayer, and that was by the yeah. end of the night, that was pretty. That was pretty. Uh, that was pretty. <laughs> hearing was hearing was done. Yeah. Hearing was done, and actually, uh, I, I saw Guns N' Roses on the Appetite for Destruction tour in Boston. Oh, and that was loud. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm in, I'm in front of Slash's. I'm on Slash's side. Well, yeah, there's so. that. Like the first time I saw Matthew Sweet, I stood there in front of the uh, Ivan Julian's amp, and it wasn't a mistake because I wanted to be up front, but still, it's just like, but, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah paid yeah. for that one. Yeah. Chad, what's the latter show you've been into? Um, the, the, th the thing that first comes to mind is the very first, not the first concert I saw, but the very first really, really loud rock concert I saw was in, in high school. Uh, my friend Jason Coster. Uh, convinced Sean Morelli and I <laughs> to go see uh, Husker Du play, and uh, oh shit, Sean and I didn't know anything about them, but Jason was a huge, huge fan of theirs. Mm -hmm. Jason was into you know, Motorhead, and um, he he was he was into the Pixies before I know any for anybody else I know this, but this was before the Pixies, but this would have been eighty five or something like that. So we went to, and y'all wouldn't remember this place, a uh, place called the Masiba Theater, which used to be. It's torn down now. It used to be right, right across at the on the opposite corner from where Sears was on Main Street. This old theater probably dates back, dated back to the '30s or something like that. And uh, <laughs> it was so freaking loud. And we, I remember just being, I couldn't move. I was just so overwhelmed by how loud. It, number one, I mean, I'm sure it was it was it was as loud as I remember, but also that I'd never been exposed to those volume levels before at that mm -hmm. tender age. So <laughs> my ears were ringing for weeks yeah. after that. And I remember we would pass each other in the halls, like Sean and I would pass, like, yeah, 
<laughs> you know, we were both kind of in, you know traumatized and, and shock after that experience because Sean and I were just both sitting there like this, and Jason's like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, they were <laughs> they were fucking loud. Bob Mold as hell. was, yeah, yeah. He talks about how he talks about how like after shows he'd have to play like the radio on static, like almost at full volume to mm. cut out the ringing in his own ears, just so he could go to sleep at night. You yeah. know that kind of stuff. Yeah. And when I saw Sugar play in ninety whatever Sugar, year that yeah, was ninety two in Boston, me and my sister, and my buddy Brent went and. um we actually bought earplugs on the way down because we wanted to go right up front and we were standing right in front of those speakers. We had our earplugs in and it was still like, you know, like, you know, filling, knocking out, inducing loud. And I mean, and this is three of them on stage, you know? Well, actually then, then uh, the loudest thing that we've ever experienced, I know I, I speak for, uh, was uh, the my bloody Valentine. Yes. When you, as soon as you said ear- earplugs. Yeah. So we, we went to see them in Austin and the, the end yeah which that, we, when they just unleash that and we were prepared for that yeah we were we, but, we had been warned <laughs> yes yes and yeah, you could feel it but it was it, it was it was uh, probably the same as leaning into a, a, a hurricane wind being able to you could lean against this wall of sound yeah. that was just yeah. knocking you over you know so you could but yeah it was blowing your blowing air so that was it yeah and and again i'm i'm not uh that's that's not what I like to do for for fun is to you know uh it, it's got to be you know it's got to be you know it's got to be worth it it's got to be you know yeah got to be amps and you know guitars and squeals and, yeah I mean there's and then, like to your point there is something when it's loud it's like it almost stuns you mm-hmm. because it does affect your you know yeah. what's going on in your inner ear which yeah. is your whole balance point anyway right. so there's this stuff like whoa yeah like I mean I've noticed that from just doing what we do like if i have earplugs in if, if it's if it feels like it's too uncomfortably loud when you when you are managed to bring it down it's like oh you know now i can actually relax and yeah it improves the way i play you know if i'm not stressed out by by that as well yeah so of course we're all in here now so that's no longer really an issue well that was yesterday you know we again uh big big thanks to our friend keith over at a and yes uh cleaning supplies mm-hmm. that was that was a just that was really fun, but he was he was kind of shocked that the sound was so clear. But I was explaining that when back when we had amplifiers and monitors on the ground, it was ten times as loud. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know. So we 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 brought that down. You know. Yeah, it's funny because uh, I was uh, looking at the footage that I got because we had a huge technical problem at the beginning of the show. Anybody who was watching yesterday, I apologize for the delay there. But thanks for sticking with us, those that did. Yeah, thank you very much <laughs> for, for sticking around. Um, but I had, a, originally, my original plan was to have a camera in front of us and a camera kind of behind us, like, so you could see Eric a little better than, mm. you, than you usually can in these things. And uh, so, I, so I only got the first song, but unfortunately, the, the front camera just wasn't working at all. The, all, that, all that footage got lost. But uh, I went back and, and watched the, the Eric cam afterwards. It was just one song. Um, but basically, all you can hear is the drums because <laughs> there's no amps back there. Oh, you yeah. can just a faint. You can just need? all what you can hear is that because the mains are in front, and you can just barely faintly hear them off in the distance and <laughs> moving around. But fortunately, you know, I, I recorded the show on the board, so I can go and take. You know, I can go and mix that, and it would just be that's the only angle I have. So that one song will be the Eric Cam nice. experience. <laughs> that's nice. Patty Public Enemy Number One was the song. But yeah, anyway. uh, how to. It was my own, my own how-to drum video. Yes, how to play this song. But uh, that was a really cool experience too, because there was uh, a lot of neighbors who were in the vicinity heard the show and just would ride their bikes by, and they were taking pictures. And so there's a, pic- a guy, the guy Jimmy we were talking to, uh, posted a picture of us. Oh, cool! Uh, on on Instagram, he's a, so he's a drummer, sort of behind the scenes with the two cameras uh, set up in front of us and so forth. Yeah, every, everybody was just so nice. Everybody's just. Coming by on the bikes and the and walking by and on their the the riding mowers. <laughs> yeah, the old guy on the riding mower. Yeah. yeah, what's going on over here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's music. Okay, fine. Yeah. Nobody was complaining. Nobody was concerned. They were just happy to. Stephen and his crew to... stayed out there till probably I don't know eight o'clock or so. Really? Yeah. I remember peeking out after dinner. Well, like, they, oh, they're still there. They that, that man. They they came for they came for the day. 
Here's when I the, saw the tarp go up, yeah, yeah then I, I, I thought they were just going to come and just hang and use the tarp to keep the you know sun off of them. Next thing you know, I could see the smoke, I could smell the grill. Yeah, I could yeah. smell it. Smell yeah. like fish or a grill. I was, or I was talking with them a little bit after. He's like, "Come on, sit down, have a beer, have a hot dog." I'm like, "No, I'm gonna, we got dinner waiting at home." And they were just out there. That old guy was singing karaoke to his own music. You notice that that tape that the or whatever they were playing was yeah. their band. And he's, uh, and he's the singer, and he was had a microphone. Is that what's what, what it was? He had a microphone okay. plugged into the whatever wow. it was, boombox or whatever, and he Note was singing along with his own <laughs> yeah. versions of those True songs. Future. Yeah, so funny. I can't wait to be that old and be like, "Yep, yeah." And he's <laughs> playing air guitar to all this stuff. <laughs> that's no, wait, that's great. my move. That's my so move. Good. He, he can't do that. Well, that's I'm just saying. It's his band, Cosmos Cosmos Street Band, I think they're called. <clears throat> Reminds me of that guy who was playing in the in the hotel bar in, in Sligo last year. Remember that guy? Oh yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, wow, we're we're motoring through these 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 questions here. Are there more questions? There, there is. Well, I've got a question. Oh, before that one, but so yeah. so what's, what's, the, time? what's the worst show you've been to? Ooh. And I don't care visually or you know, but you you know, because as we were sitting there thinking or to, you know thinking of these answers and answering the the question from John, yeah. I was thinking to myself, what's the where where is my you know, because you remember, I remember I saw Gary Moore in Dublin when I was a kid because you're talking about Dio. And I saw Dio as well. I saw Queensryche open for Dio in SFX in Dublin. And that it, it was, it was, it was, it was Vivian Campbell. Uh, oh, yeah. Vinnie Apice. Yeah, the real, the, yeah. the, 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 original, the original lineup. Yeah. Jimmy Bain. Jimmy Bain. Yeah. And, uh, but I remember seeing those shows thinking, this is as good as it gets. Musically, this is good. Gary Moore. Uh, just was it good? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. But was he Queen, that was, was his, that good? was his huh? Was Queen's Rice good? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Was yeah, that the Operation Mind Crime? No, 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 no. Shit. No, this is all Queen of the Reich, and oh, okay. uh, you know, this is the early, early, early stuff yeah, where he was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and Scott Rockenfield had that. The drummer had that. Uh, the chains. You know, it, uh, it, instead of uh, cymbal stands and, and the you know, all the hardware yeah. was oh, like, yeah. gold chains. Yeah. Tama it's, drums, yeah. yeah, yeah, and and played his ass off. I mean, played better than than uh, than he ever did. Yeah, no, he's actually he's actually he's, he's, he's a good a drummer, really good drummer. But the, the guitar players are kind of watery for me. Anyway, so but you know we're sitting there talking about all these all these bands that we've seen. I was thinking, what's the what's the stuff that because I, I I was went to some to some <laughs> to some pretty horrific shows, and the one that stands out, the two that stand out. Um, I'm not an Elton John fan, but I went to see Elton John at the, in the Woodlands, and whoever uh, took me to that show didn't tell me it was just Elton John, just him and a piano. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah. And uh, or is it Bernie Taupin, the the songwriter, the lyricist, yeah, lyricist. Oh, okay, that's not him. Who's the uh, who's the old guy, the percussion player? Oh, the bald dude. Yeah, Ray Cooper. I think it sounds right. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. We talked about him before. He came out for yeah. two or three songs. Yeah, and then the son of a bitch went home. He left. <laughs> I said, "Don't leave us alone with him." <laughs> it was awful. It was awful. I mean, but, uh, I, you know, and I apologize to any Elton John fans, but my God, I can't. <laughs> I can't take more than. Oh, oh, and it was just him, just him and a piano. I said, "We'll set the f piano on fire or something. Do something. You know, nothing." So that was the one, but then the second worst, that was the worst. No, maybe it was the maybe it's the second worst. No, let's flip it. So then the absolute worst that I've been to was Tori Amos, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what kind of what I was doing, who I was chasing to go to that one, but whoever took me to that show, oh, <laughs> if there was a pistol close by, oh, mm. yeah, you, there's, you really have to like her. That's a hard too. sell. Yeah. yeah. That's a really yeah because I um, uh, my cousin's band opened for them opened for her in a different venue, and I went and we left long before she started. But that time it went it was the Tower Theater. Oh, that was the Tower Theater. Uh, I was probably there. I was probably at that show. Was oh, this wow. early nineties? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had to be. Yeah, yeah. That was there. I met her that night. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. How'd that work out? Yeah, it's, it was great. No, I mean, she's really, I mean, as a person, I've met her a couple of times, actually. She's really cool. And, and I, I had a huge, as me and my friends did at the same time, 
when when she first came out at those early times, I we were in love with her because mm. we thought she was gorgeous. And I I did buy her first couple of records, and I I understand why you don't like her. I understand why a lot of people wouldn't like her. She got heavily criticized in the beginning for ripping off Kate Bush. They just people just thought she was just mimicking Kate Bush with her singing voice and all that stuff. Just you know, I understand I, yeah, that too. I, I, but I I, I kind of lost interest in her after the f- second record came out. I just I could not get over the 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 the. I mean, I could see how you like her too. <laughs> uh, the 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 poetry side of it and and incredibly intelligent and and yes. great lyrics and blah blah blah. Except I just can't take that meandering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that, that formless. And it, she, her, just, her stuff went up more in that direction after later. It got that's one of the reasons why I, I just. Well, yeah, it's just, to, but to me, it was just absolutely so boring. Yeah. But the best part of the show was when somebody decided to heckle her. Mm hmm. And not heckle her. They were, oh, I love you. Too. Yeah. He's like, shut the fuck Back up. up. <laughs> and I was like, all right. Yes, all right I remember I'll give that. you that. I'll give you that. But that was the saving. That was the saving grace. I was like, do that again. Mm hmm. That's, that's, a, but yet, uh, and again, just so bored. So bored. And, and so, um, uh, uh I, again, something's got to be happening. I'm, 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 I'm like a, I'm like a child. I, there has to be something <laughs> moving, something happening. And this was a piano yeah. and a poet and nothing. Yeah. Do you have a war show, Eric? For a lot of times, for me, it's been the opening band. Yeah. You know, it's not because because you you want to go see the headliner. And I was oh I was always in the mindset: well, if we get there early, we'll get a good spot, kind of a thing, kind of a thing. And then, but then you got to suffer through the. The headliner, and so the one th- one thing that really disappointed me was um, I saw Cheap Trick. I keep talking about Cheap Trick. I saw them on my um, uh, on my thirtieth birthday, on my actual day of my birthday. I saw them in Boston, and I was so excited because it was really as being a longtime fan. I always missed them when they would come around. And so finally, I got tickets to the to the uh, the Avalon Ballroom in Boston, which is now I think a, a House of Blues behind, or at least it was behind uh, the Green Monster in Fenway. Oh yeah, where the, where the ballpark is. So you have you'd have Fenway, and then you'd have Lansdowne Street, and there was the Avalon Ballroom. We played at Copperfields Club. down the road from there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's always nice, especially when it was like a punk rock show and it's a ball game, because you'd have the nice mix of. Families and baseball fans and all these punk rocker kids like kind of like crossing the street with each other. So it was always fun to see that. Anyway, so we get there and it's a band called Guided by Voices. Who, yes, who, yeah. who who I didn't know about, and they play, it was a it was and I, it also was a co-headlining set. So ninety minutes and ninety minutes when you used to opening band doing thirty five to forty five minutes or so, and then the headliner comes out, and uh, I was just getting more and more pissed. <laughs> during so I was like these fucking guys and I know you probably like them which is fine well it depends on what time you, what, what lineup you saw too uh, it was and uh, how drunk the lead singer was <laughs> no it wasn't him it was the guitar player that got super drunk like grabbing a bottle of Jack Daniels and just taking glug, 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 glug. so what year was this what, 99 99 oh maybe it was Doug there's a good guy his guitar I really love this this guitar player too but he I don't know if I, he's been in and out of the band or he was for a while Doug Gillard I think is his name he was kind of skinny, kind of super short hair. Yeah. And anyway, as the, as the set went on. He must have been on, having a rough night because I've never seen him. On the set went on. It was just like, he was just like oh, stumbling. Sounds, yeah. The cool thing about seeing them was they played, two things were cool about them. One was they played a song I actually liked, which I still like, called Surgical Focus. Hmm. And the only reason I like that song is because it sounds super poppy, unlike the rest of their songs, which are between, you know, 30 seconds and, you know, three minutes long. And um, the drummer from the Breeders, um, was playing drums with them. So that was kind of cool to see him play. Oh, cool. And then, but I was just like, get the fuck off the stage. And there was like four guided by voices fans there. And the rest of the crowd was just like, Oh no, come on. Wow. Wrap it up. You know, kind of it was kind <laughs> there were of only four. Well, there's maybe more than that, but they were all up front and they were basically just like, these guys rule. And the rest of us was like, uh, you know, that's as a 30 year old, I was yeah, like yeah, yeah. the old guy in the room, bring on cheap trick. God damn it. You know, wow. <laughs> kind of a thing. I saw them twice. Uh, I saw them in New York at Irving Plaza. That was great. And then I saw them at Fitzgerald's. Uh, and that was, that was good too. But that, I, ow. Freaking Meryl. 
my buddy Brent, who who is a huge fan, and he's a good friend of mine. He plays in the high the, the high roller band. When we were living in Austin, he's like, "I'm gonna buy you a ticket," because he knew how much I hated them. Because I just told that story. I told I told you guys. He's like, "I'm gonna buy you a ticket. We'll go see them. They're playing at the Parish, which is at on Sixth Street upstairs in Austin. And I, I guess it's still called that now. Not a, not a huge place." He's like, "I'll buy you a ticket. Let give him give him a second chance." I'm like, "Okay, fine. You're gonna buy me a ticket. I'll fucking go. I guess." You just didn't like him. <laughs> Bob Pollard is a really, he's a, he was a really interesting guy. Incredibly intelligent. He used to be a teacher before. English, he English teacher. I yeah. thought he still was, unless he retired. But Huh? I thought he was still teaching. It, it, I don't think so. I think okay. he, but, but I don't, I don't really know. But he's, uh, I have a lot of respect for that guy. Uh, he's He's got a bit of a drinking problem, though. Well, I think most of that band did. Yeah. yeah. And, although that night, apparently at the parish, they were only drinking beer, so they were fine. Yeah, but were fine. he used to have a thing where he would throw, he'd, he'd bring a, it was kind of like, it was kind of like David Beebe and, and his RC Cola. He'd bring out a, a cooler of, of Bud Light, whatever his core is, whatever his beer choice was, but he'd be throwing cans, like giving beer to the to the audience. Yeah. At some point, he was told he can't do that anymore. <laughs> so he, so something like that, he was, that was like the early, when, when I saw him, they weren't doing that, but. Uh, but yeah, yeah. You know, usually I, for me, it's been like opening bands, like because you really want to see that. Yeah, Until finally I yeah. started like, Who's the opening band? Uh, well, maybe I'll get there a little bit later. Yeah. Especially if it's like a situation where it's like a reserved seat kind of thing, like a bigger show or whatever. You can, yeah. you can go and just you know, oh, I'll just show up when I show up, and there's my seat. Yeah, kind of a thing. But yeah, extreme. Seeing extreme, I didn't really want to see extreme. Oof. Oh, because that's why we went to go. We went to go see Aerosmith because it was they, they had just finally cleaned up their act. It was a permanent. They were finally getting back on the road. I'm like, oh, it'd be cool, fun to see them. Who's opening up for them? Guns and Roses, hell yeah! Appetite for Destruction tour, right? Except for the Portland, Maine. Oh, so it was, one, it was a one show that two shows. They didn't do the Portlands. I think I talked about this before already, but for whatever reason, Guns and Roses didn't play either Portland, Maine, or Portland, Oregon on this tour. And so we get there, and it's like, oh, Guns and Roses is not going to be here. Fuck, who's going to open up Extreme? Who the hell is that? You know? And they were just, they were rough. Yeah. yeah. But they, it. it was before they had their, all their big hits, which are still kind of rough. Mm. Um, yeah, because they're all their big hits. Isn't there just one? Uh, is it just one? Is it one or two? I thought it was one. More than just one. That's generous. The yeah. ballad thing, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> which my brother had played at his wedding, which is fine. <laughs> 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 Ooh. Yeah. Just got chilly. Yeah. Yeah. 